Today's topic is gonna be for beginners entering the hobby. I'm gonna bring it right back down to basic level. I know a lot of you guys are gonna know a lot of this stuff already, but bear with us. The number one thing you need to worry about is research. Now I know when I say research, a lot of people go, ah, blah, blah, <laughs> research. Yes, it does matter guys, because it depends what kind of fish you want to keep. Certain fish need certain things, certain fish need certain tank sizes, certain type of decor, certain type of water parameters, certain type of tank mates. Not every fish can go with every fish. So I know that a lot of us just walk into the pet store and we spontaneously say, okay, today's the day I'm buying that tank. And then we just buy it. Next thing we need to worry about guys is tanks. When you are searching for a tank, I'm gonna say this and try to hammer this home guys. We as beginners tend to try to be safe and go get something really small a 10 gallon, a 20 gallon, something like that. We spend a lot of money, we buy a stand for it, we buy all the stuff for it. What happens in this hobby is that you quickly want to upgrade that tank. So one of two things happens. Either you end up getting rid of that original tank that you had and you upgrade right away, or you end up keeping both tanks. And this is the beginning of something that we call MTS, which stands for multi-tank syndrome. It's a big disease in this hobby, but I'm just talking in general as you going into the hobby and starting out and deciding, let me start with this small tank because it's safer. First of all, it's not really that much safer. I can attest right now, and so can everybody else in the chat, that it is easier to maintain proper water parameters in a bigger tank than it is in a smaller tank. When you got a smaller volume of water, your swings are going to happen much more frequently. When you got a bigger volume of water, less swings. So easier to maintain the water parameters. I know what you're thinking. Well, I don't want to go too big because what if this is not really for me and I'm just trying it out? Okay, understandable. Happens to the best of us. When people come into this hobby, there's two types of people. The first type are the people that become lifers. They keep tanks forever, which is most of us. And the other type of people are people that it just doesn't work for them. So then they want to they want to quit. And that's okay too, because this hobby is not for everybody. It does require work. It does require money. So some people get in and they want to get out. Still totally fine. Go ahead and purchase a big tank. You can easily get rid of that tank by selling it on the used market. Yes, you are going to take a little bit of a hit. Obviously, you're not going to get the same exact money as you paid when you got it brand new. Trust me, go ahead and get the biggest tank you can right now for your space and for your budget. Do it now, you'll thank me later, trust me. Next thing you gotta worry about is your substrate. Your fish may prefer gravel or your fish may prefer sand. So that's why you gotta know what you're working with. Now, gravel is good for hiding a lot of waste and detritus. The negative of gravel is that some fish don't like gravel. <laughs> some fish prefer sand. With sand, the difference is you are gonna see an accumulation of waste and detritus right on the surface of your sand, but you, you may think, oh, well, that, I don't want my tank looking dirty like that, but it's actually a great indication to let you know that your tank needs some maintenance. Another major benefit of sand, sand is so fine and the waste cannot get in between it and get under it, you're creating an anoxic environment, an environment with very low oxygen underneath your sand. Next thing we're gonna worry about, lights. Don't go buy those $100, $200, $300 lights because it's not necessary, especially when you're a beginner. I say that even though I have those kind of lights, but <laughs> you don't wanna spend that much money when you're a beginner because you got other things to spend money on. So. You can go ahead and get yourself a no name brand, cheap light off of Amazon, doesn't cost that much money and it's gonna get the job done. There is no job really for light. Your fish don't need light. Um, light in your tank actually causes problems. It could cause algae blooms and you'll start to grow algae in your tank if you leave it on too long. So the light is really only for us, the hobbyists, so that we can see and enjoy our fish. The fish don't need the light. Next one is gonna be filters. It's usually very simple to go ahead and get an HOB filter. That's a hang on back filter that literally hangs on the back of your tank and you can service it right over the top of your tank. It's super easy to maintain it, to clean it, to make sure it's working right. That's the go-to filter for beginners in the hobby is the HOB. It actually requires a lot less maintenance than an HOB. You don't have to go into it as often as you would an HOB. So don't be scared to decide to upgrade to a canister. A canister is going to provide better filtration and you don't have nothing to worry about. Stick with an HOB to start with and you'll be good to go as well. Another type of filter before I move on, just to mention it, is sumps. It's basically another entire tank 
underneath your tank with a with a full volume of water this is not recommended for beginners next thing we're going to talk about is aerating your tank your tanks your fish need oxygen so you've got to oxygenate your tank the way you do this is with surface agitation you see the waves that are going on up there those waves are creating surface agitation which allows for oxygen transfer see all the bubbles on the right hand side of the american cichlid tank the bubbles are rising to the top and popping at the surface when they pop at the surface that's what is allowing oxygen to enter the tank if you ever lose power for whatever reason the first thing that is going to kill your fish is a lack of oxygen in the tank that's the first thing they're gonna die from. It's even better if you have an automatic backup system so that if power were to go out while you were not home and you didn't realize power went out, this automatic battery backup is going to kickstart on its own and make sure that the tank remains oxygenated next thing you want to do you're going to want to decorate your tank so, you know beginners buy stuff that kind of looks pretty <laughs> if you know what i mean but you're buying decor that is not necessarily what your fish wants or what your fish need depending on your type of fish go back to step number one the research depending on your type of fish is what's going to determine what kind of decor is best for them is it rocks is it wood? Is it plants? Does it, do you need a, a whole bunch of, of decor all over the place so they can hide in between stuff? Or do you need more open water swimming area? It depends on your type of fish. So make sure you buy the right stuff so you don't look like a total beginner. Next one we're gonna talk about, obviously, now you should be ready to add water into your tank. Now that we're adding water into our tanks, guys, we gotta talk about the nitrogen cycle. What happens when your fish are in the water, your fish are consuming all the food in the water, and they're also breathing the oxygen in the water. So what happens is when your fish eat and they poop, that poop will deteriorate and create ammonia in your tank. Ammonia is very deadly to your fish. Prime is going to detoxify the ammonia the nitrite making the water completely safe for the fish let's go to the next one is i mentioned it already but it's using a master test kit you need to be able to test your water you need to understand how to test your water and you need to understand what's going on in your tank because if not you'll keep dosing prime instability every day forever you'll never know when to stop last but not least now's the time to add your fish right some fish you could just throw them in there with everybody else no problem other fish you can't do that because if they are aggressive when you already have fish in the tank to make sure that you're not going to get any problems when you add that new fish if you're a beginner in the hobby or a veteran and you're having problems getting crystal clear water you your water is always cloudy you know that you can get it a little bit more clearer there's tons of things that can be causing your water to be cloudy everybody asks me all these questions all the time and it takes super long to get all the details about your tank and try to figure out what it is that you're doing that's causing the cloudy water so i got proactive guys and i put it all in one place i made an ebook and a paperback book that has all the reasons why your tank gets cloudy and all the solutions to solve that problem. If you don't find it helpful, ask me for a refund and I will gladly send your money back. But guess what? I am not lying right here, guys, when I tell you I have not refunded a single person any money from this book. Not because I don't want to, it's because no one has requested it. So check the book out, it's gonna be helpful for you.